What if the kid from Lemony Snicket had been cast as Harry Potter? Young Klaus. Or if Gandalf had also taken the role of Dumbledore? You shall not pass! These castings might sound bizarre now, but they could have been awesome back then. He might be Batman now. I'm vengeance. Okay, or that. But most fans will always remember Robert Pattinson as the beloved Cedric Diggory. Heck, even Rob would want you to think of him as Cedric instead of that sparkly vampire that we won't talk about here. Funny enough, there was another actor in the mix for Cedric, and he even auditioned for the part of the sparkly vampire too, losing out to Rob on two occasions. The worst part is he would have been terrific in both roles as well. So who is this person with all the rotten luck? It's Henry Cavill. Let's put our cards on the table. What? Though he seems to be doing rather well for himself now, having played Superman, Sherlock Holmes, Geralt of Rivia, and even being mentioned as the possible next James Bond. So hey, you win some and you lose some, right? When you think of Gilderoy Lockhart, it's difficult to imagine anyone else but Kenneth Branagh as the fabulous swindler. He played the part to the T, and he ticked all the right boxes that fans could have wanted. However, there was actually another person who had been locked and loaded for the role before Sir Kenneth, and he was easily someone who many imagined as the character when reading the books, the irrepressible Hugh Grant. But the British actor actually turned down the part to star in a rom-com with Sandra Bullock. Seriously, we're not even kidding here. Hugh had reportedly even dyed his hair blonde in preparation before his publicist dropped the bombshell that he'd be doing two weeks notice instead of Harry Potter. Hmm, something tells us the paycheck for the rom-com was more substantial here. Oh, I know where you're going. Do you think Hugh has regretted turning down the part of Professor Lockhart in hindsight? Right now, Saoirse Ronan is one of the hottest actors around. Award nomination after award nomination and high profile role after another. She's on top of the world and having the best view of it all. Yet, someone didn't think she was good enough to appear in Harry Potter. Yeah, it sounds, uh, strange, doesn't it? Saoirse actually auditioned for the part of Luna Lovegood, losing out to Ivana Lynch. The Irish actress admitted that she was disappointed about missing out since she was also a huge fan of the series and wanted to be a part of it. Well, it doesn't seem like it devastated her too much since she's pretty much killing it in everything else she does. Still, it's clear as day that she would have made a fantastic Luna in the franchise. I know. You know who else would have been perfect? Sir Ian McKellen as Dumbledore. Technically, this one is cheating because Sir Ian didn't need to audition for the part, but hey, when you're as talented as him, people come to you not the other way around. Anyway, Sir Ian had already made all the headlines as both Magneto and Gandalf before the Harry Potter producers called him about the sad passing of Richard Harris. They didn't tell him that it was the role of Dumbledore, but Sir Ian quickly figured it out and said, No. He added, I worked out what they were thinking and I couldn't. I couldn't take over the part from an actor who I known didn't approve of me. Turns out that Richard Harris wasn't a big fan of Ian's, and he knew it, so he said, no thanks. It's wild since most fans' dream casting had been Sir Ian as Dumbledore in the first place, but alas, the beef between the actors derailed any chance of this ever happening. Interestingly, there was almost a different Snape altogether, but can you imagine anyone else but the late Alan Rickman in the role? Muggles. Do you have any idea how serious this is? You have risked the exposure of our world. Well, he was only second choice here because Tim Roth had actually been cast as Severus Snape the first time around. He admitted that his kids insisted he take the part because they were huge fans of Harry Potter and wanted to see their father in something more family friendly. However, when Tim Burton's Planet of the Apes film came about and offered him the chance to be an ape, he decided he much prefer to get Harry than be a professor of magic. Well, I'd have done the same thing. Because the pay's better. Different strokes, right? While he may regret his decision today, Tim believes the right man got the job at the end of the day, saying, Alan took it and ran with it, and that was that. It was very different from what I was planning to do with the character, and that's okay. Fair enough, but it still would have been interesting to see what he would have done with a juicy role like Snape. One casting choice that would have been simply sensational was Robin Williams as Hagrid. Holding a close relationship with Chris Columbus after having appeared in the unforgettable Mrs. Doubtfire, Robin called up his director pal and asked if there was any chance he could get the part in the Harry Potter films. I want you in the worst way. Unfortunately, that was out of Chris's hands, since J.K. Rowling had made it very clear to the producers that only British actors could be cast in the movie. And this meant that Robin was just out of luck here based on his birthplace. The disappointment stung though, and he couldn't hide it either. Telling the New York Post later on, 
There were a couple of parts I would have wanted to play, but there was a ban on using American actors. Rowling, though, had always wanted Robbie Coltrane for the part of Hagrid, so Robin was unfortunately swimming against the current from the get-go. And speaking of Rowling, did you know that she was almost cast in Harry Potter 2? As the creator of the series, it wouldn't be out of the ordinary to imagine Rowling as Harry's mother, and it nearly happened. However, the famous author put the brakes on it rather quickly, refusing the part. Eventually, she revealed the reasons for turning it down on her website, saying, The filmmakers did ask me to play Lily Potter in the Mirror of Erised scene in the first film, but I'm really not cut out to be an actress, even one who just has to stand there and wave. I would have messed it up somehow. Maybe Rowling is being a little harsh on herself here, but it would have felt like a full circle for fans had she managed to play Lily in a live-action adaptation. Ah well, it'll probably never happen now. Sometimes, though, there is a second chance in the movie biz, especially in the case of the next two actors. For Eddie Redmayne, he wanted nothing more than to play the part of Tom Riddle in the Chamber of Secrets. He told Empire, I actually auditioned to play Tom Riddle when I was back at university. I properly failed and didn't get a callback. Then he set his sights on playing one of the Weasleys, but that didn't happen either. Truth be told, an actor of Eddie's caliber deserves a starring role, not just a tiny cameo appearance. He should be swinging from the chandeliers, literally. Fortunately, he finally got his chance in the Harry Potter universe as he was cast as the lead Newt Scamander in the Fantastic Beasts spin-off. Then there's David Thewlis, whom you'll know for playing Professor Remus Lupin. In fact, you can't imagine anyone but him in the Harry part. Turns out he could have been cast much earlier in the Harry Potter films since he auditioned for another role in The Philosopher's Stone. David told Moviehole, I was up for the role of Quirrell in the first film, but Ian Hart got it. Now here's the funny part. When David actually got the call for Lupin, he was directing Ian in his movie Cheeky. Ian actually told him that Lupin was the best part in the book and he should take it. Aww. How supportive. See, sometimes things happen for a reason. Harry is the best hope we have. Now, in the case of Harry Potter, you know that Daniel Radcliffe was the perfect casting, even if he didn't have green eyes. But the search for the right actor to play the boy who lived was a long one, and American actor Liam Aiken was one of the many names in the mix. Even though he wasn't technically English, a requirement for the casting in case you'd forgotten, he got around it with his Irish ancestry. More importantly, director Chris Columbus was keen on Liam, having worked with him on Stepmom and pushing behind the scenes for it to happen. It's a message. Unfortunately, J.K. Rowling was having none of it and insisted on a British actor, not one of British ancestry, and Liam was instantly taken out of the running. But he did find some success for himself in another movie based on a children's novel, Lemony Snicket's A Series of Unfortunate Events. So, all's well that ends well here. Yeah, it's clear that some weird casting decisions happened behind the scenes in the Harry Potter movies. But if you want to find out about the strangest things that were cut in the books, you need to check out our video. And while you're at it, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, and stay awesome!